So welcome back to another journal. This is my July journal slash vlog slash dying format that doesn't get the views that movie reviews do, but I don't care because it's, it's fun to do. I'm at least going to do it through the year. So we'll have a year chronicling my life for one year. And these are generally the events. I will say um, LG hit me up in July and they were like, hey, we have this new <laughs> 4K ultra high def, high dynamic range short throw projector. Do you want it? We'll give it to you if you put it in your journal entry. I was like, okay. <laughs> so we tried to get the ink dry um, so I could get it in July. So, it, you know, it just like, well, it happened in July and it's in the July journal. Um, but it didn't quite work out that way. I actually ended up getting it in August, um, but they did still send me a projector. And so I was like, I don't want to tell them well, whatever, wait till August. So, you know, I don't want to be an asshole about it. Um, so at the end of this video, I, you know, take it out and, you know, put it through the test, a little bit of a test. I always elbow this thing, but I just wanted to be transparent and be like, no, it, it happened in August, but you know, I don't want to be a dick about it. However, let's jump into the month of July before we get to the projector part in August, which is also in this July journal. Puppy transition, as always. We're going into the power of her dome, her stretchy little dome. All right, I just came across some information. I guess. Look at fireworks. Quiet, I must inform the people. So I guess Hot Toys is coming out with, Gypsy. So I guess Hot Toys is coming out with another Two-Face figure. And that'll be going on Gypsy. Fourth of July gaming. Couple of scaredy cats. And myself, they do not like fireworks. A wizard is never late, Trojo Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. I watched Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring tonight. And the movie is so great. It's timeless. It's like a fine wine. It just gets better and better with age. It's like, as I age and watch Lord of the Rings, I see, I view Lord of the Rings differently. I just kind of take it all in differently as I just grow and mature and just get life experience. And it's like, that's how it's been ever since it came out to now. It's just like, I'm like, oh, I didn't notice that before. I didn't notice that before. I see that kind of differently because growth is growth. That's the mark of a movie that's truly timeless, you know? It's so good. And also, um, I just noticed this tonight. It's one of those things I just... I, I sized it up with movies today, not all movies today, but a lot of movies today. That scene where they're all running from the Urukai at the end and Merry and Pippin um, get their attention, like, hey, over here, to get them away from Frodo. And they're running and they go, it's working. I know it's working. Run. And it's a funny line. It's a funny moment. But that humor didn't compromise the tension of the moment because the moment was still intense. It's not like the movie just felt like it ground to a halt or the tension hit a brick wall. It's like, oh, no, it's a funny scene. So it's not actually intense. A lot of movies don't seem to hit that bullseye. Lord of the Rings does. This is so good. Got 100%. The power of Instagram, the power of the fans strikes again. Because I, I put pictures of the castle. I was like, I can't find it. Can anyone help? This one dude was like, yeah, you're missing this one. So I did it. And I got up to 99.9%. .9 he was like, and you're missing this other one. Thanks, dude. Seriously, I don't know how I did this kind of shit when I was a kid. In fact, like, I wasn't the one in the family who did My brother was the one. He was like, I'm going to 100% everything in Symphony of the Night. Me, I was like, a couple of things can slide. Man. He'd get a, dude. <laughs> He'd get a kick out of this guy. He needs to play it. Super late at night. It's like 1.45 in the morning. I'm watching Stranger Things season three. And it just kind of dawned on me. Um, I, I saw a comment in the comment section of my Spider-Man Far From Home review. And this one commenter said that he saw it with people who didn't know Spider-Man lore. They don't know who Mysterio is. They were legit surprised. There are people out there like, they didn't know that. I actually really envy them watching that movie. These are the deep things I think about at 1.45 in the morning while watching Stranger Things season three. So it's 7.30, it's 7.45-ish, um, but it'd be bloodstained. I got my platinum <laughs> up till seven in the morning because I beat it and I guess there's a missable trophy. Uh, so the only trophy I needed was this one. So I had to new game plus it and then go all the way to the point where you get the sword and you're supposed to slice the moon. Instead of slicing the moon, you kill Jeebel. 
and then you get the you get the trophy. I didn't know there was a, anyhow. So that's what I've been doing. Now I might go to bed. Okay, so here's what happened. Here's my bloodstained story. So I did the crowdfunding for bloodstained. I picked the switch as the system because switch is a cool little system. And regardless of what I say in the story, the Switch is still a really cool system. Uh, but the Switch port was just plagued with graphical issues and uh, latency issues. Had a lot of lag. I ended up Googling it. I was like, Switch port bloodstained problems. And a lot of other people noticed the same things I noticed. And life is too short to uh, play crappy ports of great games. So, got the PS4 version. A hundred times better. The game looks better. The frame rate's better. It's it's cleaner. It's smoother. The graphics are more detailed. It makes it it makes the Switch version look like it plays in 720 on the TV. I don't know if it does, but I swear to God, compared to the PS4, it's what it looks like. Uh, so yeah, after that, it was a completely different experience. Um, it actually is a great game. So hey. PS4, that's the version to get. By this time, I don't know, maybe they've patched the Switch version. I do not know, but it shouldn't have been released like that. It's just, compared to the other ones, I mean, people who got the Switch version just got boned. Unless they want to fork out more money on Amazon to get it, which is what I did. I'm not saying it's a smart way. Life's too short to play crappy ports of great games. I'm just saying. So editing my Stranger Things Season 3 review, and, uh... I, I just didn't dig season three. You know, today is a very special day. Today marks the 10 year anniversary of my first YouTube movie review, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. 10 years of reviewing movies on YouTube. Holy shit. You know, the thing is, I don't really know what to do. You know, like I wanna make a video. Do I make it as a well, thanks for the past 10 years video. Do I make it as a, hey, here's what I would have done differently video on, on the course of my YouTube adventures? I don't know. Okay, so just had therapy. Today was therapy day. I was at 8 a.m. It was an early one, and I am a night owl. And I love sleeping in. I love staying up late. I love staying up late and then really sleeping the fuck in. Um, but it was at 8 a.m., and I found out. Actually, I learned this years ago. I'm telling you this now, that the key to being a night owl and making an early appointment, like an 8 a.m. appointment, is simply not going to sleep. So now I should probably go home and go to sleep. All right, so Stranger Things Season 3. Um, so I have read uh, some of the comments in the comment section. And I'll tell you this, there's a coolness in there that I really like because it takes it back to early YouTube for me. There are people in the comment section of my Stranger Things Season 3 review who are like, Dude, thank you for saying this. Oh my god, I thought I was alone. I didn't like the season either. Granted, a lot of people who are like, you're fucking crazy. Um, but I like those messages. I, mean, I like all feedback, but I like I really connect with those messages of people like, oh my god, I thought I was alone. I, I didn't, none of my friends see it this way. Like, they all love it. I didn't really like it. My channel was just built on connecting with my fellow misfits out there. I don't know, I just kind of <laughs> got deep in my head about it. Um, it was kind of cool. It took me back. To, uh, it took me back to the point, like the reason I started my YouTube channel. That was, that was a cool moment. About to watch The Lion King. It's a 10 a.m. screening in Seattle. Um, but tinfoil hat moment. I just learned that Never Ending Story is on Netflix. And Stranger Things is a Netflix show. In Stranger Things Season 3, they sing the Never Ending Story song. I think it was a cross-promotion. How many more people watched Never Ending Story on Netflix because they sang this song in Stranger Things Season 3? I'm just saying. We're shopping for shirts, suits, and ties. Point is, I'm bringing the jackets back in the videos. I'm inspired. I got Bose sunglasses that play music, like, directly into my skull. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, actually. Uh, Danger likes it. Don't you, Danger? The birthday of these two little shits. It's July 12th. Happy birthday, Danger! Happy birthday, Chips! Ah! All my sleep patterns are royally fucked. <laughs> hey, uh, went to bed at like 10, and I was like, all right, I'm in bed for the night. And Danger just jumped up here. But, uh, 
Then I woke up at like 1.30 in the morning. I'm like, I feel like I'm up. So I'm going to play some Destiny 2. All right, so I just finished watching Return of the King Extended Edition, which means I just finished watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy for the umpteenth time. And it just gets better and better. Like it really, I <laughs> text my friends afterwards. I was like, so I'm crushed beyond repair in the most satisfied way possible. That's the only way I can describe it. And I, I, I know I always kind of go back and forth, kind of always. But I have always gone back and forth between which do I like better, Return of the King or Fellowship of the Ring. And after this time, I feel like I'm drawing a hard line and saying Fellowship of the Ring. It's just, it's the introduction to the lore, the characters, the fellowship, the world. Return of the King is great, but it's great because the trilogy is great. Like, it's a satisfying conclusion. What is Return of the King without the rest of the trilogy? But Fellowship, I can just watch a hundred times over back to back to back. But this is why. Like, that monologue I just had into my phone is why... I just consider Lord of the Rings one movie, you know, like the trilogy is just one epic 12 hour long movie. This headache is business. Ugh. I should be editing my June journal. I really should. But I got on a flash marathon. I kind of fell off the flash wagon. I'm watching season four. I really like the villa. I like the fact that it's not a speedster. It's a really smart person. <laughs> Here I am. It's just crossed my mind. And tell me what you think of this. I'm pretty sure Batman vs. Superman is the first Batman movie to not have a Batman love interest. Like some flirting with Wonder Woman here and there, but no active Batman love interest. I don't know what you want to do with that information, but it just, it just dawned on me. Are we never going to address how brave it was of Vader to face Obi-Wan Kenobi? Like, last time Vader saw Obi-Wan Kenobi, Obi-Wan turned him into a quadriplegic, and on the Death Star, he sensed Obi-Wan's presence. Anyone else would have just run from that scenario, but not Vader. Vader faced his fear. We're never going to touch on how brave that was of him? You know, uh, today... Is uh, it's one year since John Schnepp passed away, and uh, I always, always remember. this is a story. I feel like you'd never know if I didn't tell you. So I'm totally gonna tell you this because I love that we would do this. So um, on comic book shopping, the segment on Awesome Tacular that Schnepp and I did, where it's basically he would inform me about comic books, like legitimately. I mean, the guy, a compendium of comic book knowledge. Um, but for every episode, it was us walking down the street and going into the store, right? And so we would, it would just be like, yeah, walk and talk, but there was no audio ever. And so he and I would just walk and it'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And he'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And we would just blah, blah, blah. And we would scramble, scramble. And we would just say nonsense because it just didn't matter. And it was just funny to us. <laughs> just saying nothing and uh, it looks like we're just having these deep conversations in fact that's sometimes we would do that I'd be like snap it totally looks like we're having a deep conversation right now about comic books we're really we're talking about jack shit and he'll be like that's right jeremy we are talking about jack shit we're talking it, it, it was just it was just funny to us it's, it's the illusion of production you know so when you watch that actually i don't even know if they used a lot of the footage but i'm pretty sure the footage of us coming around the corner and opening the door it totally looks like we're having a conversation, an engaging conversation about comic books, but we are legitimately, purposely either saying blah, 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 <laughs> or just talking about how we're talking about absolutely nothing. Um, and it was just funny. It was just like, <laughs> we did it for every episode. <laughs> Anyhow, undeniably, um, the world was just a better place with him in it. That goes without saying, that's self-evident. Um, and I miss the dude, you know? But I have memories. And that's important, you know? Like, people live on with what they leave behind. Memories are a huge part of that. So I'm glad I have the memories with the dude. And I keep them. I keep them, you hear that? I keep the memories, schnup. <laughs> he oversees my nerd lair daily. But on a serious note, you, you never do know. Just hug your loved ones. He's, he was gone way too soon. He is way too young to be gone. All right, so I turn on I, YouTube. I just log into YouTube. And My Life in Gaming, they're streaming. They're doing a live stream of an arcade playthrough of Karnov. And I was like, I just want to see someone possibly beat this thing. 
it's like the impossible game. So anyhow, I, I've been watching them. And if if you like retro games and you're into the retro gaming scene, uh, subscribe to My Life in Gaming. That said, I really hope he beats Karnov. Man. It's it's gonna be an uphill climb. Holy shit! Here it comes. Prince Caspian was Billy Russo from The Punisher. What the fuck? You know what I'm talking about. The entrance to the Batcave. Why is it sealed up? Okay, so I love game-bound video games, and then they had to relocate, so I was without game-bound video games. But like now he's got a bunch of legit real estate. And I'm gonna be here for the next four hours. Sorry. That's cool with me. If I was in the room, all good. Also, dude's a fan. I didn't know that. Yo. I mean, he's a customer. He had no idea. <laughs> he's now, like, now. wait, you have a. I'll get it now. He's I'll gonna look it up now. I'm gonna buy a lot of games. All right, so I picked up a Samsung video monitor. So I got GBA games through the GBA player on the GameCube with Extrem's homebrew software because it's much better than the actual official Nintendo stuff. Uh, got an adapter so I can play it with a Super Nintendo controller. And the game looks pretty fucking sweet. Right in Night Trap VHS. So YouTube, for some odd reason, processed my new video, the Zombieland 2 trailer video, at like 360. Just, you know, just basic standard dev shit in 2019. Why? I'm watching episodes of Batman the Animated Series, which is the greatest animated series of all time. And like, some of these episodes are really deep. I just finished that, uh... Island of Dr. Moreau-ish episode. Man, those are some deep emotional themes. <laughs> what? This animation, it's aged like wine. So my collector's edition of Fire Emblem for the Switch came today. I got the package. And I hope it's okay. Uh, thanks, UPS. It's a nice steel bookcase, though. That's pretty. I like steel bookcases. I have two Switch steel bookcases. This is one. You wanna guess the next one? You know the next one. You'll be caught in the night, night track. The art of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Sweet, this is why we get special editions. God, my hair is doing a thing, because I just woke up. And this is actually why I get these soundtracks. I just, I love video game soundtracks. It's a 2020 calendar. That's kind of neat. Oh wait, what's my month? Everyone has to see what character or monster they get for their month, right? That's my month. Gonna be real? There's a game crush going on right now. I mean, my god. Also, it's 8.15 in the morning, I haven't slept. Because Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Three Houses. I just finished this fight. There's skin in my teeth. All right, sweet, we, we raided the castle. And then the dude turned into a big monster and I had to fight that and I was like, if one of my characters dies, I'm resetting this. This might be the time I don't finish Fire Emblem. My hair says it all. I beat him though. And no one died. But God, I was so scared. So I, uh... The boss of a dungeon in Fire Emblem just... crits me in one hit. My main guy dies. And now it's game over. The whole dungeon means nothing. Fire Emblem. Gypsy's happy that at least you get to keep your XP. There is that. It's the last day of July, the 31st. And I'm pretty sure I have insomnia and I'm not even fucking with you. I, it's 12.25 in the afternoon. I didn't sleep last night. I stay up until six in the morning because Fire Emblem Three Houses just got its claws in me. This is old school video game induced insomnia. It's captivating. It, it's Harry Potter. It's really good. You should play it if you don't value sleep because you'll stop doing that. I don't even care to sleep. It's not this like it's not like it's noon and I'm tired. I'm not tired. Oh, Guardian Moon, time to play. So that's it. Generally speaking, those were the goings on for the month of July. And as promised at the end here, now I'm going to mess with a projector that LG sent me. And I, I, I guess I want to be clear about that because when companies send you things for free on YouTube. You have to be so transparent about it to the point of almost being obnoxious about it. LG sent this projector to me at no cost to me. They sent it to me for free. They were literally like, hey, you're a movie guy. You want a new movie thing? You want a projector? And I was like, yeah, because why wouldn't I? Like, 
Why wouldn't I? So I just want to be completely clear about that, so you know. But um, yeah, let's check that thing out. I feel like I should get close, like, hi. How are you? You come here often? So th this is actually, the shelf it's on it was an Ikea bookshelf cube that I had a spare one of. And so I was like, it was too tall to put the projector on because it's a short throw projector and the screen's actually quite big. It's a, it's a 130 inch screen, which the specs on this projector say um, it throws up to 120 inches. So I'm actually kind of breaking the rules in having it throw 10 inches larger than what LG considers optimal. Um, but like, if this isn't optimal, <laughs> I don't know, man. Cause uh, yeah, it, it's, it, let me, uh, I mean, we'll just show you. So this is my home theater room with a short throw projector right there. Um, it actually is, it, I like the fact that it's like this little compact thing. I suppose I could get a longer um, table or something, but. I'm totally fine with it. I do like the fact. All right, we're gonna get down here again. Like, it's a really modern design. Like, I like the design of it, um, which you can tell they designed it to go into a living room, which I, I <laughs> I'm going for practicality here, some cinema quality. So it stays here in the theater room for me. But if you wanted to have this in your living room, in your TV room, um, and just throw it onto a screen on your wall, it wouldn't look weird. It wouldn't look like, wait, this is clearly a projector. It just looks like it's kind of a modern table piece, which people will ask, what is that? And you'll say it's a projector. And then they'll know it's a projector. Then they'll be green with envy. This is how it goes. And here we go. This is uh, more uh, not copyrighted stock footage that they gave me so I can show you. But the lights are on in the room. Like that's the big thing right here is the fact that the lights are on. I shouldn't, I should barely see an image with a projector with the lights on. And that's, I'm cheating even because the screen's 10 inches bigger than uh, what LG considers optimal. So, you know, the smaller the image, the more condensed the light, the brighter the image, you get it. And there it is. I mean, you can't see the 4K because this camera, which we may or may not call my phone, doesn't film in 4K, but it's, <laughs> the picture just popped. It's the contrast, those deep blacks. It's like cinema black is the white whale for home movie theater entertainment. Hey, yeah, like I said, like any light on the projector is from the screen itself, but the projector itself is, you wouldn't know it's on if there wasn't something on the screen. So I took the blackout curtains down, granted the blinds are still closed. So it's the effect of having curtains, but not blackout curtains. It's a little washed out on the sides, but still doable, but I would still prefer the dedicated dark theater room. And granted, all this footage is very bright. Keep that in mind too. Like if I'm watching The Matrix in these conditions, I don't imagine it's gonna look too good because it's a very dark movie. So here it is. The blackout curtains are down, the blinds are open, and this is the breaking point. Like I wouldn't watch it like this. It's just way too washed out. It's an impressive piece of tech. It's a really bright image from the projector, but it can't contest with the full might of the sun. So impressively, you can watch this in the daytime with the curtains or blinds closed, and they don't have to be blackout curtains. That's really impressive. Or you can have the lights on in the room, surprisingly. I didn't expect that. But for me personally, you know me, I'm always going the dedicated movie theater dark room with the blackout curtains because nothing beats that, and the image is just better. It's just science. I will say, all right, first of all, there's no discernible order to the Blu-rays behind me, so don't even try. <laughs> it's just gonna hurt your brain. But for me, I mean, I blame my dad for all this, to be honest with you. If there's one person I could blame, it'd be my dad. Like with love, love you, dad. But when I was a kid, he had, you know, the surround sound speakers. And for the analog, CRT age, he did a really good job. Like when we watch movies, he'd be there with, with the processor, he'd be there, hear the oh, pfft, oh, pfft, oh, for all the speakers. And uh, I just elbowed my shelf. But I remember him having like discussions, if not arguments, if not just him getting frustrated, the fact that he would always try to explain to people that widescreen isn't cutting anything off of the top and bottom. You're actually getting things cut off of the sides when you have a full screen movie on a four by three screen on a CRT TV. And so I were just back then, it wasn't a common thing that a lot of people knew. And so I, he, would, he drilled that into my mind when I was young. He was like, no, no, you know that now. So always carry that with you. Now, widescreen's just the standard, but back then it wasn't. Um, so it was, 
it was only inevitable when I had my own place that, I mean, I would have a theater room. It was actually the selling point of this house. I think this room's supposed to be for like kids to play in or something. <laughs> Screw that noise. No, it's a theater room. So I'm really happy with it. You know, I, I feel bad that I can't show you some of the really cool things that I've seen now. Like I've had this thing for a couple days and uh, two movies that I popped in that I actually do own. Unfortunately, this is actually the... Uh, that right there it stops there these from here over those are the 4k movies that i own and i have to expand my library but i popped in the matrix and uh, blade runner 2049 and uh they both look it's next level <laughs> it's like the first time you ever saw the matrix like on board this actually streams um netflix and so just the first thing I did before I even had the sound hooked up, I was like, whatever, I just got to see some um, some video. And I popped on Blue Planet 2, which is shot in 4K. And it's like, I would say it's like looking out a window. It's like you're there. It's mind-blowingly amazing. But seriously, I really appreciate the projector. Um, they didn't have to do that. It was awesome. So thank you for that. And uh, you, you've given it to a good home. I will give it a lot of use. And uh, it will not go wasted <laughs> i just gotta expand my library now and thank you all for watching these still i mean these journal videos don't get the views that movie reviews do um but it's fun you know i, f I feel like it's a way to connect with you guys more and uh, i feel like people who really give a shit watch these um i hope you know a projector in here doesn't feel to like all sponsored or commercial, but I mean, I've unboxed things in these journals before. So it's just kind of like that. It just so happens. I love projector tech and it, it all comes from being a projectionist, years of being a projectionist. So uh, I, I was kind of like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, it maybe it got a little long winded. I hope not. I hope you guys were like, oh fuck, that's neat. So suggestions, fellow audio video files out there. If you have any suggestions for uh, 4K movies, high dynamic range movies that I should get, uh, let me know what they are. Please comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. I should still transition with a puppy. Ding, dude. Oh.